Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson 22, Average Rate of Change. Okay, classwork one, exercise. The height of a container in the shape of a circular cone is 7.5 feet and the radius of its base is three feet. As shown, what is the total volume of the cone? All right, so what do we do? Step one, write a formula. Volume equals base area times height divided by three, or one third pi r squared times height. Okay, so how do we find volume? We substitute in our givens. Volume equals one third pi. The radius was three squared times 7.5. Okay, so then I get the volume to equal one third pi. Three squared is nine times 7.5. Uh, this one-third and nine will reduce to one-third will make the nine a three. And so I just multiply 7.5 times three, which is 22.5 pi feet cubed. Okay, and there we have it. Okay. Oh, did I miss something down below? No. Exercise, lesson 22, exercise, and go on to the next page, time in minutes. Okay, so. Okay, so they're now giving us this table. Time in minutes is blank. Water level in feet, one all the way up to 7.5. So they want us to find how long it would take to fill this and how long it would take to get to all these levels up until it was full. So if we know the rate at which the cone is being filled, um, we could take the total volume and divide it by the rate to determine how long it would take to fill. So water flows into the container in its inverted position and in, in, at a constant rate of six feet, six cubic feet per minute. Approximately when will the container be filled? Okay, so I went back to the previous page just so I had room to draw or to write. All right, so let's just say the water flow is going to be at a constant rate of six feet per minute. Six cubic feet per minute. Okay, that is our rate. That's what we're going to work with here. Okay, so since the container is being filled at a constant rate, the volume must be divided by the rate at which it is being filled using 3.14 as an approximation for pi and rounding to the hundredth place, what would we get? Well, we take our answer here. So it would be 22.5 pi divided by the six cubic feet per minute. And that would be 22.5 pi. Let's just do it in our calculator. Okay, so we would do 22.5, and it said to use 3.14 as an approximation. So 22.5 times 3.14 is 70.65 divided by 6. And we get 11.775. And let's just round that to approximately 11.78. Okay. <clears throat> so that's how long it will take to fill this at this rate. So it'll take almost 12 minutes to fill the cone at six cubic feet per minute. Okay, so there's our value, 
Okay, so what do we do now? Well, now we want to show that even though the water filling the cone flows at a constant rate, the rate of change in the volume is not going to be constant. So if we want to know how many minutes it will take for the level in the cone to reach one foot, then we'd have to first determine the volume of the cone when the height is one foot. And do we have enough information to do that? So what we're, I'm saying is, is if this is seven and a half feet, and this is one foot down here, do I have enough information to find the volume of this little cone here? And the answer is yes. So here's what we would do. Okay, so this would be this green area here blown up. <clears throat> so the whole thing is 7.5, and this little piece down here is 1. So I know that the radius of the whole thing was 3, and I need to find the radius of this little one. And in order to do that, we do a ratio. Height of the big divided by the height of the little equals the radius of the big divided by the radius of the little. So when I cross multiply here, I get 7.5R equals 3. And divide both sides by 7.5. That will give me R equals 3 divided by 7.5. Oops. And I get 0.4. Okay, so it's 0.4. It says now we need to determine the volume of the cone when the height is one foot. So now we need to do the volume of the cone for one foot. Volume equals one third pi r cubed times height. Volume equals one third pi. The radius was 0.4 times the height, which is 1. And I want to know what 0.4 cubed is. Oh, it's squared. I'm sorry. Pi r squared times height. Whoa. That would have been a disaster. Let me fix that. 1 third pi r squared times height. So it's 0.4 squared times height. Well, that would be V equals, and let's just use the calculator, and 1 divided by 3. I like to put those in parentheses. 1 divided by 3 times 3.14 times 0.4 squared, which is 0.16, and times the height, which is 1. So I don't need to multiply by 1. It will change nothing. I hit enter and I got 0.167. Okay, so the volume, let's do an approximation symbol. 0 0.167. Okay. It's approximately 0.167 cubic feet. Okay, so now that we know the volume of that, look what we did up here. We took the volume of the whole thing, divided it by 6, and found out how long it would take. We're going to do the same here. So we're going to take the 0 0.167 divided by 6, and that's going to come out to be 0.167 divided by 6 is 0 0.0278, so let's just say 0 0.028. A little bit more than 0.28, and that is what? Minutes. Okay? All right. Which is, and then do you know how much time that is? I mean, I don't know what 0 0.28 minutes is, so how can we find out how many seconds that is? Well, if you take that 0 0.28 or 0 0.028, multiply it by how many seconds there are in a minute, then we'll find out how much of a minute that is. So if I take 0 0.028 times 60 seconds in a minute, then I'll tell me how many seconds it will take to fill the cone up to this level here, and it would be 1.68 seconds, a little bit more than a second and a half, and we're already at the one-inch level. 
Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put that here. 0 0.028 time in minutes. Now we need to calculate the number of minutes it will take to fill the cone the rest of the way. So how would we replicate the work from above by first finding the radius of the cone, then the given heights, and then use the radius to determine the volume of the cone, and then determine the time it would take to fill it. So we just have to keep doing this over and over. So now I want two. So now what I would do is change this. And so what I'm going to do is, let me just change colors here, and let me extend my page. All right, so we're going to do the same thing over and over. So 7.5 over 1, but now it's 2, equals 3 over R. So it's going to be 7.5 R equals 6. Divide by 7.5, and we get R equals 6 divided by 7.5 is 0.8. Okay, where does that go? Now that goes where our R goes. So then we do V equals 1 third pi 0.8 squared times the height, and the height is now 2. So the only thing that's changing in our problem is our R and our H. Okay, so now I have R equals 0.8, so then I do this, V equals 1 third pi, 0.8 squared is 0.64, times 2 is 1.28. Okay, I'm just adding some steps here, and then actually what I can do is just put it in my calculator. 1 third, using 3.14 for pi, even though there is a pi button, I'm just following the directions. And then, just to make sure I didn't make a mistake, I'll just put 0.8 squared in the calculator, and then times 2. And I hit 5 for some odd reason. 2. Enter. And I got 1.34. I then take that volume that I found and divide it by 6. And 1.34 divided by 6 is 0.223. Okay, and we'll just round it to the tenth on this one. So when I go to the next page here, I will put 0.22. Okay, so I'm not going to go through every single one of these. I've already done three of them for you. Um, if you go back here, this is filling it all the way up. 11.78 was the whole thing, so I can put that in here. This is 11. 0.78, and then I would have to calculate all of these values by going back and doing this over and over and over again. The next time I would change this 2 to a 3, and I would get 7.5R 7. 7. equals 9, 9 divided by 7.5, get a new R, put it here, times 3 this time, get a new value here, divide by 6, and put it in my table. I'm not going to take the time to do every single one of those. It's just repetition. And But here's what you should have gotten. Oops. So it should be 0 0.75, 1.78, 3.49 for 5, 6 is 6.03, and then 9.57. Okay, so there's the table filled if you followed all those steps. Okay, so now we want to graph these. Okay, so I'll use red to graph it. It's easier to see. So here we have a table, time in minutes, and it's in half-second intervals, and then water level in feet. Okay, so I want to enter this data, time in minutes, water level in feet, so when water level was, or I should say time in minutes, 0.28, which is a little bit more than halfway here, we were at 1. So I put a dot right here. 
Oh, that's 0 0.028. We will be careful. 0 0.028 would be way over close to the edge like that. Okay. And then 0 0.22 is almost a half, but not quite. And that was at 2, so that's right here. And then 3 quarters at 3, so 0 0.5 is here. 0 0.75 would be halfway between 0 0.5 and 1, so that would be right there. And then we had 4 being at the 1.78 mark, which is a little bit more than halfway between 1.5 and 2. So I would put it like right here. And then 3.49 is really close to 3.5 for 5, just a smidgen to the left. All right, and then 6.03 is just a little bit more than 6, so that's right here. Okay, and then 9.57, 9.5 is here, just a little bit more than that. 9.57 would probably be about there. And then finally, 11.78, a little bit more than halfway between those two, right up there. So this is what's happening. So it starts off filling fast, but then it slows down because the area around is getting less and less. Okay. Okay, that is the end of lesson 22. Go do your problem set.